I'll, I'll remove all these things. So what we want exactly, I want potential of <coughs> shell A and B. Now, what is the method? Uh, again, once again, you can use that formula. So one, once again, we'll use the same thing. When you're calculating potentials, what we should do, we should just take the superposition. Uh, all of you do follow, just look at the screen. It will be a potential at point A. Now, first what happened, I'll assume that only shell A is present. I assume that shell B is not there. This Q2 shell B is not there. Then what is the potential at point A given by? It lies on the surface, so KQ1 by A. Then assume that shell A is not there. Only shell B is there. Charge Q2 and shell B is there. Then where is the point? No, the point lies on, here, here inside the shell B. What is the potential here? Potential on the surface of shell B. K, Q2, B. Trying to follow. Potential comes superposition your top right. Similarly, potential at B, uh, potential at B. Again, first assume that only shell A is present. Here at this particular point, only due to shell A. <coughs> Now where the point lies, the point lies outside the shell A. So then this will become hmm? like this code. Just wait. Can I? Can I? I'll, 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 just some. Uh, look at this one. No potential at potential at B only due to only due to shell A. So where the point point lies outside and at what distance from the center B plus no uh, where is the point I'm finding out potential A. So I assume that shell A is not there only shell B. Where is the point point lies on the surface of shell B. So what is the potential on the surface of shell B? K Q to B. These are the potentials of shell A. What is this? Potential of, this is potential of shell B. Just, uh, you have to practice it. And now uh, let me find out potential difference. VAB, VA minus VB, let me calculate. So KQ1 by A. KQ1, KQ2B get cancelled. So we'll get KQ1A minus KQ1B. Look at now. So what will happen to the charge on this shell will not determine potential difference. If I add or if I remove some charge on shell B, what will happen to the potential difference? Independent. So what is the conclusion? VAB is or potential difference, let me write sentence, potential difference between shells is independent of charge on charge Q2 on outer shell B. Whether you add some charge, it is now for this, if I add some charge, Potential of A and B will change, but potential difference will, will not change because independent of Q2. Now I, I'll, I'll remove some charge on shell B. Then also the potential difference will remain same. Potential difference between shells is independent of charge Q2 on outer shell B. Getting the idea? And these are some very fundamental things. Now, now uh, so like a, just very, very simple. Again, the, the thin iron shell. So first I'll add a charge. Uh, where do the charge? It'll go in this side on the surface. I'll add a charge Q1. So shall we put the charge where you have to show in fact like this. Huh? The charge will reside only on the surface, will not go inside. I mean, sir, can it happen like this? The charge, 
this iron shell and you know to write every time so will charge will go and decide on inner surface which one is correct thin iron shell charge q is given <coughs> now where do the charge will decide will it decide on inner surface or outer surface it should decide on outer surface not on inner surface this is a wrong thing huh? fine huh? that this will be I'll, 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 I'll. agreed but but you can you can really trouble teacher like this sir okay are you sure charge will not decide what i'm showing here charge on inner surface of shell also no these are the things where student was supposed to analyze things but sir you said charge <coughs> We here concentric shells are there. Okay, that there will be like electrostatic induction will occur. And now you have to ask one more question. So why minus q one? Why not minus q one by two? Anybody? Why not minus q one by two? Why not minus two q one here? Plus two q one. Why minus q one only? so what is this this is a this is a conductor no you are going to draw a gaussian surface in the material of shell b then what is the net field inside the conductor should be zero i i i am exploring this one these are very fundamental things where student was supposed to analyze okay that one so this is wrong okay now again let, let me go back to the same idea there are two shells are there they are given charges q1 q2 the same thing why the charge minus q1 plus q1 actually what happened this is the shell a the shell b what happened little bit thick i'll make it to to make you understand i know it's still more thick is needed it's not thick shell both are thin shell only to make you understand hmm? then then what we do is like a, we'll draw a gaussian surface both are thin shells huh? both are thin shell to make you understand so here is what we have point p now tell me like what should be the uh, what was the charge the what all charge given plus q1 will be here we know that what about minus q1 minus q1 will come on inner surface agreed Minus Q one will be charge on inner surface. Uh, sir, why only minus Q one? That was the primary question. Why not minus two Q one? What will be the net field at point P? Net field at point P must be zero. Am I right? Net flux should be zero. Net flux should be zero. Net charge enclosed should be zero. So naturally, so how much you get here? If Q one is there, minus Q one must be there. Agreed, all of you. Why? Why we should think in this? Everywhere the Gauss law will come into picture. So here, though it's a thin shell, I just to make you to show that Gauss, like a Gaussian surface, I am making thick. It's in fact a thin shell only. There's a shell A and shell B. Agreed, all of you. So why it should be minus Q one on inner surface of shell B? There's a reason. And now you can ask question like, you didn't consider such minus Q one and you solved it. Whether you consider the induced charge or inner shell or not, the final answer will be same. Check it. So minus Q one plus Q one, you write it. Solve it, you'll end up with same answer. When thin shell comes, you need not to bother this induced charge <coughs> on inner surface. Thick shell comes, you should consider. 
actually there's a lot of confusion some books they consider this and solve it some books like like what i did i didn't bother this minus q1 and plus q1 on the shell b i have like the same answer if a thin shell comes you need not to bother about the induced charge directly proceed but if they ask you something surface charge